Hi class, this is our next video, our latest video boost. Um, there was a little bit of a hiatus because the videographers were out of town. Um, this video boost, I want to go a little, I want to go over a couple of important things from the flashcards that we probably won't have time to go over in class. Um, one is a lot of the flashcards on aromatics are set up to have you figure it out, kind of like we did in our problem session today. So, for example, when you do this reaction, and you add um, SO3 H to SO4, this product is formed fastest Okay, this is the kinetic product. But if the reaction is heated and allowed to equilibrate, this is actually the thermodynamic product. And I want you to think about that, like why that is so. So you'll see this in the flashcards. Think about why this would form fastest. That's based on the intermediate. And then think about why this would form, this would be the most stable product. What is it about this position right here that might be a little unstable? These are called the peri, peri positions. Okay, so think about it. So this is a kinetic, this is a thermodynamic. All of the EAS reactions we've done so far have been kinetic in that we have based the outcome on the intermediate. And remember, intermediates, carbocation intermediates, even if they're resonance stabilized, relate to transition states, not to final product stability. This reaction, because it's reversible, Remember, this was our blocking group. When you heat it up, you actually get more of that. Why is that so? Try to think about why this is more stable than that. It has nothing to do with intermediates. Um, other reactions that I want you to figure out are the ones that involve these little heterocyclic rings. I think there's one like this. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, there's one like that, and there's one like this. And you may look at this and say, uh, these look very strange, very unfamiliar. Actually, this one is like this. I'm going to change it. You have one of your sheets like this, HNO3, H2SO4. These, ah, uh, I'm, I'm going in circles here. This and this. Now these look like kind of strange conditions, or rather strange conditions. However, furan, this is furan, and pyrrol require milder conditions to undergo electrophilic aromatic substitution. You don't have to show how it's generated, but what I'm going to tell you is that these conditions generate NO2, the NO2 ion, cation. Okay, so this is a nitration, but it's a milder nitration. I want you to figure out where it would hit. You've got to be the resonance detect detectives here and draw all the resonance forms and figure out which set of resonance forms is the best arrangement for the charge. Similarly, these conditions produce this cation. Can you see that? This cation, and this cation, of course, is called an acillium ion. You've seen it before. This is a Friedel Crafts acylation. It's a milder one because this ring is more activated to undergo the chemistry. This, again, is a nitration. Clem, how much time do I have left? Uh, four and a half minutes okay. so far. So um, that's just a little bit to get you going on that. I think they're really important to, to do. Um, one thing I wanted to show you again was the difference between lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride. Lithium aluminum hydride is much um, stronger reducing agent than sodium borohydride. So I wanted to reemphasize, if you're using sodium borohydride, you can, in principle, selectively reduce an aldehyde over a ketone. 
So for example, if I was adding this to this, this group being the aldehyde is more reactive than the ketone. So what you would expect is for the hydride to add to this selectively. So if you kept your conditions mild enough, you could add to this selectively and break that bond. Okay, now mechanistically, the way the mechanism, the way the reaction works, very, very, um, with a lot of detail, okay, is as follows. So if I have my sodium borohydride, it's, these are very frequently done in some kind of alcohol. So for example, say it's being done in ethanol. What happens, it's kind of interesting, it's different than lithium aluminum hydride. This comes in here, okay? And then this captures a proton from this um, alcohol. So I'll, I'm gonna draw a molecule of alcohol out, out here. Remember, the alcohol is a solvent, okay? So that's getting protonated. Then what do we have? OH, H, H. This O minus ethyl is going to get bonded to the borohydride. Because remember, boron is never completely happy. It goes between its negative state, which is shown here, where it wants to give up a hydride, to its neutral state, where it doesn't have an octet of electrons. So this will grab the O. And eventually, all those hydrides will get replaced with oxygens. So this will become, eventually, after several steps, this will become BO. And a plus. Okay? How much time? Uh, seven minutes and 20 seconds. Okay, so, again, what am I doing here? showing you, first of all, that sodium borohydride can be used selectively to hit an aldehyde over ketone. That doesn't mean it won't re react with the ketone. Secondly, I'm showing you the mechanism, and the mechanism is a little different than lithium aluminum hydride, which is a two-step process. Lithium aluminum hydride is not compatible with alcohol. If it were in the presence of alcohol, it would just rip the hydrogen off this and form an alkoxide. Um, by contrast, if I had the same substrate, with lithium aluminum hydride, it would be a very similar reaction. However, you would have a terrible time controlling it. You would not be able to control it. You would have to keep this reagent completely away from anything that's protic, anything that can hydrogen bond. It can't be around water, it can't be around alcohol. This would be done in ether. Okay, you wouldn't be able to control it. Even if uh, you could somehow control the equivalence, you would get both reductions. Some molecules would have both groups reduced. Like this. Um, some molecules would have just the ketone reduced, like this. Okay? So the, you'd lose control. The other issue is to protonate that OH in a separate step, you have to add water or hydronium ion. It's very different, so make the distinction between those two. Okay, so we'll see you in class tomorrow. Thanks, Bill.